Hey folks, this is Matt once again, coming at you with another random review of a film that recently, uh, coming out on DVD called Tactical Force. It's a directed DVD film starring Stone Cold Steve Austin and Michael Jai White. Now, it's directed by this guy named Adamo P. Cotuero, Cotuero and... This guy, I guess he hasn't done much. He directed a film called Badass. Uh, which I'm looking now got a 3 out of 10 on IMDb. Something with Tom, starring Tom Sizemore. Badass. Huh? And Frank Stallone. And Michael Bailey Smith. <laughs> wow. Wonder what Badass is. Huh. But he directed this film, Tactical Force, and long story, it's a it's one of those films. At the end of the day, I think it's an okay film for a directed DVD film. I thought it was okay. Uh, long story short, you have the of course there's gonna be a lot of spoilers. So like all my reviews, spoilers. Um, you have a four uh, LA, you have a SWAT team of four members. You have Steve Austin, Michael Jai White, a girl, Alexa Doug, Duig, I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name, uh, D-O-I-G, Doig, Alexa Doig, uh, she's basically Rowan, the lead girl, and Jason X, so she's in this film as one of the unit, and then a the fourth guy who I don't really know who that guy is to be honest. Basically, there's a holdup at a store. They go in, kind of a grocery store. Um, Steve Austin, he tells a guy to head out. He gets the phone, basically says, you know, I'm supposed to ask for demands, but I think, we, but I personally think we should storm in and beat your shit, you know, beat your ass and throw it in jail. And the guy's like, what? Like, what? Oh, I kind of like that. Uh, Steve Austin, I... His films are hit and miss, a lot of times miss. I'm not a fan of the Condemned because I think it gets very pretentious and preachy at the end. Like, how dare you watch violence even though I'm watching an action movie? I'm like, you're kind of giving yourself the middle finger. Plus, I thought the pace was kind of bad. Uh, the Stranger got kind of... The Stranger was just horrible. I know Aaron saw that film too, among others. Stranger was just very boring, mediocre, with a half ass ending, crappy editing, confusing storyline that you didn't care about. I know he did damage. I think I, I saw that one time and I just didn't care for it. It was kind of like, oh, you know, he gets in a pit and he fights people, and I think maybe he gets some. I don't even remember. The movie is just forgettable. But then he did one called Hunt to Kill. I'm talking about films he stars in. Not, you know, the Expendables he was in. But he starred in Hunt to Kill, and I liked Hunt to Kill. He had a really good fight with Gary Daniels in that film. Hunt to Kill was good. And I put this... I don't know if I liked it more than Hunt to Kill, but it's definitely one of his better ones. It's a lot better than The Stranger. It's a lot better than Condemned. Because the film is... It's only 80-some minutes long. Snap pretentious, it's pretty straightforward. Just basically those four they storm the, the grocery store. Michael Jai White's a lot of fun in this film. He doesn't get to do tons of fighting, unfortunately, but he has a lot of fun because he kinda puts down his gun and there's one more on his back and the bad guys tell him, you know, put it down, all this and he pulls it out, he has like a BB gun, like a red rider BB gun. And the guy's like, What the hell you have that for? Well, you know, it's a Blah blah blah, Red Rider BB gun. It's my good luck charm. And he shoots the BB gun and hits the guy right in the head. Then he's able to get his gun and shoot the bad guy. Uh, Steve Austin just body checks the guy, like runs towards, just hits that guy and beats the shit out of him. <laughs> I'm guessing the reason why the bad guy doesn't shoot is that because it's the same person who's like, what? What? So he's kind of. I think he's pretty much more of a sturdy cat kind of guy. Kind of like one of those all talk but no action. 
And then the other two sort of uh, take out a bad guy. And then they're talking, they think they're going to be commended, but then they come in. And of course, you have the typical commander yelling at them. But I, I don't know, I had fun with this scene. Because, you know, they think they're going to get talked to it. And, you know, he's like, anything you have to say for yourself? And I love, uh, I thought Michael Jai White did a solid job. Because he's like, well, uh, we rescue all the hostages. And the guy just stares at him like, <laughs> he's like, well, how are you liking? Nice cup of shut the fuck up, Sergeant. <laughs> I don't know. I just I just had fun with some of the dialogue in this film. Definitely throw a lot of the f bombs, and they're basically just suspended and they have to go back to training. And the reason they're pissed is that you know you shot you killed some of the you know, basically they killed some of the bad guys and store suing you and um, this person. You know, who you body chat, his hostage, he's got to, you know, piss in a bag for a while, or shit in a bag for a while, something like that. And I like how they're in training, like, Michael Jai White's having a little bit of fun, and he has some good back and forth with Steve Austin, like, Michael Jai White, while during, they have to sit down and listen to this guy talk, and he's like, Michael Jai was playing with the, the pan, just letting it bounce up and throwing it up and down. And, like, they have a funny thing where the guy's saying, um... You have a daycare center. Uh, how would you rescue them? How would you take them out? And, you know, one, I forget what Michael Jai White says, but one of them says, you know, just go in and shoot him. One says, go and use a flashbang. You can't use flashbang for kids. You gotta use tear gas. And Steve, all, Steve all's like, you guys are pitiful. No wonder we gotta go back to training. You really want to know what, come on, come on, seriously, what do you have to do? And they'll all look at him like, I don't know. First, you go in the bat. Then you use flashbang. And then you use tear gas. And then you shoot the son of a bitch. <laughs> so they're having fun. I appreciate that. And mainly the whole story is that their training goes to this hanger. At the same time, you have sort of two groups of bad guys. You have one group of bad guys who are Russians. Mainly a guy played by Michael Shames. Who, Michael Shanes, you've probably seen him mostly on the Stargate TV show. Um, what was it? He played James Spader's character from the movie, but he was on the TV show. Uh, Daniel, Dr. Daniel Jackson on Stargate SG-1. Uh, Michael, that's Michael Shanes. He plays a bad guy here. You believe his Russian accent? I actually liked him. I thought, again, the guy had fun with the role, and I thought it was a lot of fun. I definitely thought he was a lot better than that bad guy in Hunt the Kill. That, that one who just couldn't die and shit. Then you also you have this other set who are uh, supposed to be Italians. And like even Michael Shane's like, you're Italian? Because he's like a black guy. He's like, what, no black guys in Italian? I was born in Rome, motherfucker. <laughs> so there are two sets of bad guys. Um, again, like Michael Shane's the Russian and a woman. And these two other guys. And... There's this third. There's this other guy. I think his name was Kenny, the character. They want a case that he has, and he's hiding in this hangar. And at the same time, the four SWAT team go in. They're doing their drills. They hear something, and the fourth guy, which again the guy I don't know his name, doesn't matter because he goes in. He gets shot and killed. And the three come out, and the bad guys realize that they're just using blanks, so they shoot him and they hide back. And basically, it's sort of a standoff where they have to, like, Stone Steve Austin gets to, has to run to the SWAT truck at one time and fights the guy pretty quickly, shoots him. When people get shot, you see a little, you know, blood squibs, so that's cool. At least what I saw. Um, let's see. Steve Austin is a lot of fun. He has a lot of uh, funny lines, like, uh, one of the baddest is being the shit out of uh, the girl. Let's uh, do the girl from Jason X, and she, she the guy's like, oh yeah, they send a bitch to do a man's job. And of course, Steve on comes and beats the shit. like, you're right, they do send a bitch to do a man's job and beats the shit out of the guy. Decent fight scenes. I thought they were decent fight scenes. Michael Jai White has a few decent fight scenes, including one especially at the end. And I love that one time Steve Austin just one cracks the guy's neck. And he's like. 
you know, Bruce Lee would be proud. He did, was like, does a move like that. He has a group back and forth with Michael Jai I, I like seeing these two guys together. Uh, like Michael Jai fights a few guys, fights a guy on the stairs. Um, and then Austin has a few good fights as well. They find the case. You never quite see what's in the case, so it's kind of one of those annoying things where they show the case, like, oh shit, it's that. But they don't say what it is. Which I thought was kind of a little bit annoying because they kind of did that in Paul Fitchin as well, and among others. I think uh, Ronan with uh, Raul De Niro, they did that too. Uh, guy with the case, the, they finally get that guy Kenny, and they show him a way out. And the Italian guys hire sort of a hitman type of guy to get in, kind of sort of a hitman, kind of a special guy to do jobs. They get captured, and then basically go into the finale where. They know where they hid, what was in the case. Um, Steve Austin's with Michael Shanks and the Russian woman. Michael J. White's with the the girls with the other guys. Michael J. White has a good fight with a guy. Um, Stone Crew Steve Austin and then work, Michael Shanks and the wom Russian woman work together for a while. You get in the truck and they're running and gunning. They're shooting at the SWAT van while that Russian girl's shooting back at the because the Italian guys now don't want the Russian guys to get the case and vice versa. So they have a little bit of crossfire. Um, and then basically you get to the end where Stone Cold has a sort of a final fight with the that sort of hitman type guy. Again, decent practical fights. Um, I don't know if I can put the trailer up with this review, but you can check the trailer up, see if it's your cup of tea. Do I have problems with the film? Um... One, the Lexa Doe, her character is completely useless. Kind of like Jason X. After the opening of Jason X, that girl does nothing. She's a bystander. And I don't think she's a bad actress. It's just they give her nothing to do. Same thing here. I'm not even sure if she killed someone or did something in the opening in the grocery store. But after that, she does nothing. She's like a tag along. And I'm like... She doesn't really get any badass moments or fights or shootouts or anything. Uh, like Michael Jai White gets some good moments. Like there's another scene after he has a pretty good fight with the guy, one of the bad guys. I thought it was really good. And then he has like a, a grenade launcher, you know, kind of like Arnold had in uh, Predator. And Steve Austin's like, when do we start shooting those? And Michael Clark, uh, Michael Clark Duncan, God, <laughs> Michael Jai White. He's like, well, we, we're not issuing these, but this is mine. I think he calls that after his grandma. <laughs> and the line he says, I don't know why they had Michael J. White say this. Because it's named after his grandma. He comes out, he says, eat my grandma! <laughs> it was so stupid that I kind of laughed, but it was pretty stupid. But at least when the truck explodes, it's a practical effect. Which I liked. I just wish they would give him better line than, Eat my grandma! <laughs> but I'm laughing, so maybe that was the right choice. But uh, At least they give Michael J. White some moments. They give Steve Austin some good moments. But this girl has no moments, so I don't know. She was pretty much a tag along. And I'm like, I don't know why they did that. But whatever. I went into it for Michael J. White and Steve Austin. I mean, the film's definitely not as good as Michael J. White's Blood and Bone. Or Black Dynamite. But it's definitely a lot better than uh, some of Steve Austin stuff. Like The Stranger and The Condemned. I think because the pace was pretty good. It went pretty swiftly for me. The actresses were decent. He's a little bit too shaky at times. Which is, I know it's a common thing now in directed DVD movies unfortunately. Not all but a lot of them. Which is a shame. But uh, Steve Austin was good. Michael J. White was good. I liked some of the little fight action scenes. They were decent. Um, the ending where you find out... I'm, I'm not going to spoil that in case people see. You find a little bit thing or two about what was really going on. Uh, it's not like April Fool's Day. I'm not saying like that. But I'm just... You find a little bit of what's going on. I'll just leave that for people who see it. That was kind of stupid. 
I'm like, really? I don't know about that. You know, that sort of thing. If you see the film, you might know what I'm talking about. Well, you learn about you learn about uh, not one of not one of the main characters, not Michael J. White, Steve Austin, or anything, but like the guy that they're protecting, the Kenny guy. You find out a little bit something about him, and uh, I kind of didn't really swallow that. But so I thought the ending could have been a little bit better. The way they ended it, I thought it was kind of a little bit half-assed. Let's it do it, or they could do it, or whatever the hell her name. Could have given her some stuff to do. Um, maybe a little bit more. Uh, of course, Michael Jai, I always like to see him in the fight scene, so a little bit more fights with them. But decent time waster. You know, for a directed DVD film, you do much, much worse. So I like Tactical Force. It was worth a watch. You know, not worth a buy, but it was worth a watch. So I liked it. So, whether you want to give it a watch or not, that's up to you. Check out the trailer. Um, just type in Tactical, Tactical Force 2010, or 2011, I should say. Tactical Force 2011. You'll find the trailer. If I can't put it in front of you, you'll find it on there. So, either way, uh, thanks for watching. Take care, and see you later. Ciao.